All right, this is a video response to the legend, and uh, he, uh, you're uh, running a little contest there, man. First of all, congratulations on 600 subscribers. You talked to you just a, two, three times there on uh, some of our podcasts there. You left great comments on my videos, and I've enjoyed a ton of yours. And you know, you deserve uh, you know infinite times more, man. So uh, you know, keep on trucking there, and uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing, and Get some more of those subscribers. But you got me with your contest. You got me. And your timing for that contest was, you know, kind of funny in a way because I shot a video tonight just because I was bored. It showed a little curvy art that freaked me out when I was a kid. And then while it was loading, I saw your video. And I was ready. I was ready. I was just going to, you know, watch a few video, YouTube videos, throw on Netflix, fall asleep on the couch tonight. And then you did it. He asked for the comic book that freaked us out when I was a kid. <clears throat> and, you know, I thought about all the little horror stuff and things. And, and here's here's how I am, man. The things that freaked me out. I was a kid that could get up, you know, in the morning back when Showtime first started. We had the little box. You sat on top of the TV. You pushed the buttons. I've told the story before. But you could get up at like 5, 6 in the morning and stuff. And they'd have like the Exorcist on. Omen. Salem's Lot. You know, I'd watch this stuff and it didn't really freak me out or anything like that. Friday the 13th didn't freak me out. And I couldn't figure out what the things were that would freak me out. Some of the stuff that freaked me out were like old TV show movies like that they made for TV. Were made for TV like a Bad Ronald, which uh, I don't know if anybody's going to know what I'm talking about. Bad Ronald and The Babysitter. The Babysitter was about the girl who was babysitting in the house and she starts getting these phone calls. And the guy keeps telling him, you better check on the baby. And the, the, long, the more he calls, each call gets a little bit more, uh, you know, sinister and stuff. She calls the police, says there's no, um, you know, there's no calls coming into the house. And then at the very last, you know, minute of the movie, that phone is ringing. And by this time, you're like freaking out. You're like, don't answer. She picks it up. It's the cop saying, get out of the house, get out of the house. He's in the house. The calls are coming from inside the house. The guy was sitting in the room with the baby trying to get her to come up and check on it so he could kill her that way. And stuff like that. You know, this is probably more than you wanted to know, but, you know, you asked. So, I couldn't figure out why I could watch these, you know, classic horror movies, you know, six, seven, eight years old, not phase me, and then turn around and be freaked out by, like, you know, little cheap movies on TV. Hostel came out, and I figured it out. The movies that freak me out are the ones that, you know, they got me. If I was, you know, my early 20s and I'm going across Europe and somebody shows me pictures of where I can really go to meet fine women and I go out there and end up, you know, being in, you know, a victim of torture porn, they'd have got me. They'd have got me. I mean, you know, that's what I'm getting. That's the stuff that I watch. You watch most horror movies, you're yelling at them, they're doing something stupid. <clears throat> kind of ends up being like a comedy with blood in my eyes, but you throw something out there where I'm in that situation and I would have fell for it, that's a horror movie. Okay. So what you asked was the first comic. I've collected comics a long time. Since, you know, been reading since 77. And I looked up, this is just a small stack of my horror comics, and I ended up uh, doing a little digging. And, you know... I really liked that because I found the book in the first stack. I didn't think I'd find it. And I actually went through the same, the first box twice just to be sure, and there it was. Now, this is from 1975, so I probably read this in kindergarten back in 78. And this is the actual book, okay? This is Creepy Things number two, and I want you to look at that cover. First of all, that cover freaked me out, okay? You got the man getting ready, the big old hillbilly in the swamp, getting ready to smash the little monster with Big Brother Monster right behind it. Getting ready to smash in. <clears throat> I would walk by this comic, just the very cover, man. I had to build up some nerve to look at this, man, because that thing just freaked me out. Okay, so big deal, it's in a swamp and stuff like that, but you're talking to a mountain man, okay? You take the freaking goonies, put, us, put the thing in the woods, in the mountains, and that's what that's me so you know first first things first it's in the freaking wilderness that's where I, where I, where I lived more or less but it's, it's an anthology series it's got a couple of uh, you know little short stories and stuff and it's got Mike some of Mike Zek's first art 
you know, before he went to Marvel. But then we get to slime, slogs, and glumps. First of all, this had the gross out factor, man. The guy who wrote, drew this book, man, he made, you know, he put some texture in there that just made this thing feel slimy when you read it. I mean, I, when he caught the frog, it had a gross out factor, man. He's sitting there and he's touching the frog, and that frog had weight, and that frog looked slimy, and it felt slimy. And it's just a frog, you know. And basically, uh, you know, these two, this boy and this girl's out in the swamp, you know, and they're talking and stuff, and uh, going by pure memory here, man. And uh, she finds something that she calls a slog, a slog behind the rock. And this kid's like, the other boy is like, a slog, what's a slog? She goes, that's a slog, and I'll bet it's the most, ugliest, most gruesome thing you ever saw. Man, that thing, I mean, I could feel that thing, I could even smell the nasty on that thing when I was a kid. You know, of course, where it's a couple of kids and I'm a kid reading this, I was even, I was like, yeah, that would be me, but I'd be the one sitting there pulling that thing out from under a rock, probably. You know, we just saw the toad and everything. So they get called back home, and you got these bad parents, and then he sticks it in an aquarium overnight, and the noises it makes it freak them out all night long. I'm trying here. You know. So the parents are all freaked out, and the dad's had enough, so he's going to go in there, and he's going to take a stick to it. And then when he opens the door, he freaks out, and he sees the thing. Smashes the aquarium. And the freaking gross little Chithu looking thing starts hopping around in the kids' room. I mean, I could see this happening. I really could when I was growing up. This is just one of those stories where you could. And uh, he asked him where he got him, and he said he got him out in the swamp. And uh, he was supposed to return him in the morning. It turns out the little boy had to talk with somebody. So the big slimes, the big slogs, and the big glumps are all surrounding the house. To get it back and that freaked me out because this is something I could see me doing and it happening to me so that was a real quick little video you know and I got other stuff that freaked me out hell I might make you know one more if I find the books anyway <clears throat> so anyway congratulations again legend and uh, you know uh, you know thanks for getting me off my ass here you know when I should be in bed so all right Later.